And uh, I think that is wrong. I think that that uh, journalism is a contro potere, it's the fourth, uh, you call them the way, any way you want. <coughs> but I think you, that's, that's the only way we can be helpful in democracy. There was a, there was a, a, an American columnist, actually a very good one, called Mencken, H. L. Mencken, who once wrote that the right relation between a journalist and uh, politics it's the same as between a dog and a lamppost. <laughs> in Italy, the, the relation is between uh, the dog and a biscuit. <laughs> is that enough? I'm talking about my own, and, and that makes me really sad. I've been a journalist for 30 years now, and I, my first book was 20 years ago, so I, I did, I've been around, and I've seen it. And that's if something that will not come out in international thing, but it is a, a real disaster. The idea that you think that as a journalist, your duty is to help your side no matter what. No matter what. And, uh, and of course, it, I knew, if I, I have many colleagues, say, if they were here, they would say, Vepe, say an hypocrite. Because you already have a side. Yes, but I'm trying to make, you know, I'm a, I'm a human. I'm trying to, but I'm not on sale. That's something. Uh, if you want, if you just want to, uh, Italian want to be masochistic, I think it was Transparency International, new, uh, new sort of uh, rankings. rankings, thank you, it was out today. And I think Italy is number 69 just behind Rwanda. Actually, my assistant, my PA, my personal assistant, uh, she's from Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> they ran away in 94. She was a young girl with a family, mother, father, and her, and three brothers. She's a fantastic girl. She studied in Italy. She speaks four languages. She's a superstar. And, uh, and I know she's been giggling all day. <laughs> and I don't want to have a bet. Prego, un altro signore, poi lei. Prego. Uh, can you speak up a bit so I uh, shout? You refer many times to these five million that actually get informed and read newspapers, but that could be the same here in the UK, where most people actually read tabloids rather than just the daily paragraph. So why a phenomenon like Mr. B can happen in Italy? And let's not forget that before Mr. B, our democracy was not happening. Actually, Mr. B came because it was a failed democracy. So what Italy has that actually produced this phenomenon? That's, uh, you better read, sorry, but that's more than my other book. It's La Bella Figura, A Field Guide to the Italian Mind. That's Psicologia Nazionale. This is Gastroenterologia Nazionale. <laughs> 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 but Britain uh, is a country I know well. And I think that all those, all, everything is different. The control of government on television, the personal and professional pride of journalists is completely different. Most of them see their job the way I do. Some don't, but many do. Uh, so I'm, in a way, everything I said tonight is perfectly obvious to a right-wing journalist and to a left-wing journalist. For a colleague from the Telegraph and a colleague from the Guardian, you wouldn't find this extraordinary what I say. It's pretty obvious, probably, I would say. Uh, then you have uh, the broadband and Wi-Fi. It's uh, in Italy. We have uh, we have Wi-Fi. It's 4,000 hotspots all around the country. Turkey's got 8,000, and uh, in Britain I think around 25,000 broadband, <coughs> internet access, uh, television. All those numbers are different. So the five million club in, in uh, of course there is a big group of people in in Britain then uh, probably do not vote and do not, uh, are not interested at all in deciding who's going to run the country. But uh, it's really not a thing, to be honest. I think it's... Uh, uh, già, qualcuno ha già fatto lì. Prego. What do you think we should do to tackle the capital? Shout. What do you think we should do to tackle the capital relevance in Italy at the moment, without waiting to start with clients? No, you... Uh, that's, I don't know. What I, everybody has to do well what he does. It doesn't mean political campaigning. I mean, I, that's my very first book on Berlusconi, for sure. It's going to be the last. I'm talking to posterity, so. Uh, I'm a journalist and a writer, and I can do what I, I, 
I want Italian to understand that the main difference between uh, uh, there are others, of course, but uh, Travaglio and Grillo and others um, for the non-Italians, those are uh, critics who use very strong language and very more forceful, probably than I am. Actually, much more forceful. They have a different approach of criticism to Berlusconi, but they believe they. I told them, I know Travaglio, we grew up together with Montanelli, and I told him, Marco, you, and, you seem to believe that there is a kind of cupola, you know, a few bad, rotten apples, but everything is perfect. And the, and the problem is, uh, it's, it's the country. If, when I talk about the Robinson, he can talk about, he can wink about tax evasions, because he knows that that the, 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 the fiscal culture of the country is abysmal, just to use one example. So I think uh, instead of, you know, the, let the politician do the politician. You, you like politics, go into politics. I don't think I don't want to do it. I will not do it. Uh, I think I'll, uh, I'm too old, first of all. I was yesterday in the House of Commons. I spoke at the, in, the British Italian um, in parliamentary group. <laughs> Were a few lords and a few MPs, and uh, the lords were old, older than me. But uh, walking around, I spent the evening, I had dinner there. It is unbelievable how young they are. 60% of, of the people changed. For instance, fight against this electoral law, which is an absolute disaster. And watch out, because it's not only Berlusconi who likes this electoral law, they all love it. They don't say, but they all love it for a simple reason. For the non-Italians, again, we have a system of blocked list, uh, which means that you go to vote, you vote for a party, and whoever is on that list, you cannot choose the people. That's why, let me give you the exact figure, because I have to be precise in this. That's why il Parlamento italiano anche per questo ospita un'ottantina tra inquisiti, imputati e prescritti, una ventina di pregiudicati. Why? People with, the, with, the, with that kind of background, because we cannot choose. But let alone this, this sad example, but you can have everybody. I have three pages, and of course, as you can imagine, I check everything very, very carefully of extraordinary people that, since the book is about Mr. Berlusconi, that Mr. Berlusconi brought into Parliament. It's everybody, his dental hygienist, <laughs> his geometer, uh, three, the three doctors, four of his lawyers, but that's extraordinary. But Bossi, if you want, can do the same. You can have the, everybody you want. So there are five people who decide how the Italian Parliament is formed now. So, one good thing is to get rid of this electoral law, which is the beginning of the disaster. And then do well whatever you have to do. I don't think it's... Uh, it's uh, I know some people think taking the street in a violet. I see many violets around here. I, mean, I, I don't blame them. I can see their point. But to be honest, I don't think that will change things. Prego. How real or artificial you think? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's in the, in the, uh, in the Tina factor, I explain, let's say there are a few things politically that he's now the wisest, not the wisest, sorry, the shrewdest, not the wisest, politicians around in Italy, and of course he's the elder, the elder statesman in Europe. He always says, you know, la vecchia politica, il teatrino della politica, we are the new, I've been led, which in fact he's been in politics more than everybody else and really knows the job by now. And one, he did a few, a couple of things he did politically and strategically were masterpieces. He realized that the, the Italian, a British right in Italy cannot exist because you need Britain to have a British right. <laughs> you, the Italian right that, that my maestro Montanelli loved was bound to lose until the 27th century. So he decided the only way was to bring in everybody, northern separatists, southern separatists, the Michigan and the Sicilian, former socialists.